After two nights in Launceston at Mum and Dad's, we just came back here to pick up our bikes, which is very exciting. Nice. We are now heading off again over to the northeast coast. Yeah, northeast coast, yeah. Uh, I don't know where we're going exactly. Uh, I think there's Pedal Point, um, Waterhouse, Waterhouse Campground, Edison. and then we'll go to Edison, Edison Point. Um, yeah, a few places that we actually have. We haven't actually gone to the top corner, have we? No. No, we've never gone up to that top corner. We've done most of Tassie, but. We're scooting off there, and then Thursday we'll be in Derby for at least four or five weeks, you think? <laughs> Probably. No, we'll hit Derby for a few nights, maybe three nights, and see if we can get all the trails done. And we really want to do the Blue Tier down to St. Helens Trail as well, so... Oh, I'm pumped. This is going to be the best week of the whole trip, so... donation site here in Scottsdale. There's amenities including showers. While Chris is dumping the toilet, he gets all the great jobs. Uh, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a, well, not a tour because I don't know what this place is, but I'm going to take you with me while I explore a little bit of what's around here. Gee, that truck's noisy. From over there, crossing over this little bridge where the rail trail um, begins by the look of this sign. Playground up the top there. Nice big barbecue area, lots of seating. I kept walking and come across this stage here. I really like reading these signs and this one actually says that wetlands like this spring-fed pond are very special places. There's the spring-fed pond right there. You can see that says rail trail. 700 meters and what's this you won't see smoke coming from these chimneys that's because the chimneys along this track are the work of freshwater burrowing crayfish how cool there are 15 species of them in tassie as i oh, watch the spiders hanging as i mentioned before chris is dumping the toilet so i think if i attempt this rail trail walk i might get in a little bit of trouble so i'm not going to go too far but i'm going to show you what i'm looking at right now because it's it's pretty nice actually. So that was the little bit of grounds or parklands in between the free camp and the start of the rail trail. And I know there's more down that way. So hopefully Chris isn't crabby with me because I left my phone in the car. Just walked from over there, come around. And I'm gonna come up here and have a bit of a look. So there you go, not called after its location in the northeast of Tasmania, named in honour of Charles Northeast, initiated the concept of a people's park back in 1930. Look at that, wow. Run around here. Oh, there's the stage we were just at before. And there's a dog walk, a boardwalk, frogs, barbecue, playground. What's on this side? You need to take time for the full experience. That's right. That's what I'm going to tell Chris if he's like, where were you? I was taking my time. And around here, 
our place for recreation and fun. Who would have thought this was all hiding right behind the free camp in Scottsdale? It's not a free camp, it's a low cost or donation camp. So you gotta put your money in. Look at this place, it's so worth it. I was gonna get in trouble for taking too long. But it looks like he's not even finished yet. I do have this to say though, if you're planning on camping here, it's noisy. So while it's beautiful, it's Where quite loud. Been? I've been exploring. You're right when I said free camping, it actually says free camping there, but there is a donation box up near the toilets that I suggest that you use. A dump point and somewhere to fill your tanks. And there's a dog right there, so I'm guessing that it is dog friendly. Yes, it is, it says on the sign. done? Yep. Toilet empty, tank full? Yep. All tanks full. In the car too? Yeah. Yeah. Drinking water's full. Alrighty. Let's go. dusty road now so that's when we come inside here Ugh. and we come up to this caravan and we turn it on and it pressurizes the van so the dust stays outside was corrugated and it is a little bit and there are a few potholes as you can see but it's not too bad hey, this is where we are waterhouse conservation area i think we're here right now and we're going to come across to here we're here this is a cracker of a campsite ransom's beach side so that's waterhouse beach side so back that way we got bridport and all the ocean stuff so we're heading north east now so let's go check this joint out it's been a mid drive all the way in here it's all like the sandstone track Super smooth, amazing grass, paddocks, and this is a gorgeous section of Tash. Moving forward from what I told you before, when I said there was um, not much corrugation and the roads were pretty smooth, there's actually a little bit of corrugation but quite a few potholes now, and Chris reckons it's because it was flooded out here. Well, we had a lot of rain, that was when we were on the east coast, so. All this top section got flogged, so it would have created a lot of potholes. So. Epic drone footage, what we're about to do now will have been a success. If you have not seen any <laughs> epic drone footage, then the drone shall forever remain up in that tree. It's very sad. We've maneuvered <laughs> this a little closer. So he's gonna climb up and he's gonna go and try and get it down. It's pretty fish week tree though. Yeah. 
Yeah. MacGyvering up. Mm? The stick. Yep. Oh. Two anti flap kit, three anti flap kit poles, and a broom. And a broom. Yeah. And I'm ready down here with a towel, expecting it to land perfectly. All right, just perfect. Though. Into my arms and not bounce off the tree and land on the road or the car. Right, so he's knocked it down a branch or two. Three branches down. Three branches down. We're gonna get this thing. It's right there now. So, alright, here we go. We got it! <laughs> you did a good job. Yes. Yay! Good thing. And it's literally just the propellers. Oh, they're not really done. There's no, a little just, nick in it. Yeah, there's a couple. There's a few of... scratches. Oh my goodness. The gimbal's still fine. There's a few battle scars, but. <laughs> The thing is, the footage is still on it. <laughs> Look, gimbal's working perfect. Oh yeah! Our drone is safe and sound, and I have a question <laughs> dun, dun. for all you drone owners. Have you done it before? Have you crashed your drone? Have, have you, you lost it in the ocean? Have you drowned it? <laughs> Leave a comment below, we want to know. This is the second one now. <laughs> Yes. I did I did donate one to an artificial reef up at Tiwa Beach in Queensland. So if you want to go diving, about 20 k's up from North Shore, straight out in the ocean, about 300 meters, you'll see a drone in the bottom of the ocean. So it's an artificial reef. I was thinking about all the divers. So, mm, but you will not find a drone in the tree here. So no. let, let us know how you lost the drone. This is the way we are continuing. Up. We're gonna go to this one down here. That's Ransom's Beach down that way. Chris is outside drinking with the neighbours. I'm inside cooking dinner. Got some pork steak. Here we go. Got some garlic. I'm cooking dinner. What are you doing? Just admiring the. Okay. I'd open the blind, but I've got like pork all over my fingers. Go on. Right, oh, babe. What's for dinner? Well, I went bargain shopping at Woolworths this morning and got Ooh. some scotch, pork scotch steaks from ten dollars down to six. <laughs> and <laughs> here's one I prepared earlier. Oh, nice, good. Coleslaw. You can't beat the good old coleslaw. Reduced though, can for three dollars. Spent a fortune on sun-dried tomatoes and olives and artichokes. <laughs> a fortune. <laughs> they were not cheap, but anyway, makes up for this side of things. Ooh, that looks... So here's the end product. How did the mill go? Down here. Well, yes. Oh, Fantastic sure. for pre bought You're a pretty nice end product. Pre <laughs> for pre made stuff. Oh, wow. So modern, darling. I know, right? Oh. No thermomix or air fryer required in this meal. Mm. Wow. You actually survived cooking a meal without an air fryer and a thermomix. Probably could do the pork in the air fryer, actually. Mm, that's true, too. Mm. Well, time to enjoy? Yes. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Check that out. That's his private property and look where they're 
path leads to. Oh my goodness. So we're up, up there. I can hear the guys talking and our caravan is just behind that one. Just there. That's where I just was. The pretty flowers. And this is where I'm going now. <laughs> Back here. Where are we? <laughs> Um, Waterhouse? Waterhouse, uh, is it called Waterhouse? I don't even know. Yes, well if you look on the map there's a Waterhouse Road and there's a section called Waterhouse and this is Water Waterhouse Conservation Area, I yeah. think. This is Ransom's Beach here though. Yes. So this is a, there's a, what, would you say four campsites up there? One, two, three, four, yes. Probably four campsites, so don't come here on a weekend because it'll be just, <laughs> you will not get a spot. And we just managed to turn the caravan in there. It's so tight, small and You guys would have seen that. <laughs> but, but yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, there's Waterhouse Island, um, just over that way Yeah, we'll show well. you guys Waterhouse Island, yeah. And apparently there are lots of orcas yeah. off there, so might spot one or two of those, <clears throat> fingers crossed. But it's a nice, it's a nice spot. Yeah, and if you look way out in the distance over there you'll see all the big uh, wind turbines so we're going to actually head there today to Petal Point. Yeah I don't think you'll be able to see that. No you won't we see can. it from where but we can see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah beautiful little spot the whole the entire area driving this northern eastern end is it's different to everywhere else in Tasmania isn't it? It's just rolling. Green rolling hills. Yeah it's it's beautiful it's a really nice spot though. Cows. Yeah, lots of cows. Sheep. Lots of sheep. No, I didn't see that many sheep. Yeah, the dude nearly stopped us on the road to cross the sheep, remember? Oh yeah, well, one paddock of sheep, yeah. But more cows. It's more dairy up this way, isn't it? I dairy think and beef, I think. I think they're eating cows, those ones. Yeah, not all that. Again, don't come for yeah. us for factual information. <laughs> Currently, we're sitting on a beautiful beach and the sun is rising behind us. And today we're driving back along the corrugated potholdy dirt road and along the bitumen road as well. I don't know. No idea. <laughs> to go to the other site. So apparently yeah. it'll take us about an hour and a half to get there. Yeah. So a little bit closer to the wind farm. So that's where we're headed now. Anyway, explore this area. It's beautiful. brought us on a pretty little walk. <laughs> <laughs> pretty little walk to nowhere, I think. <laughs> Yay. But we got a good view of where we're going today. Straight out. I don't know if you can see the wind farms out there. I don't think so. I need a much bigger zoom lens for that. Yeah. Is it alive? Oh, he'll be alive. It's just cold. Okay, well, we've got like thongs on, so let's keep walking. Babe, just... Jeez. Oh. Where we stopped for a little walk to nowhere. Said good day to the snake. Yeah. So we Casarina Hill campsite. Like there's four, I'm guessing there's four down there. And the guys that we were just talking to said that there was toilets. No chainsaw. Bring Love your you own. Bring your own! Such a good boy, I didn't get it out. We just passed through Tasmania's best kept secret. Oh, we're not passed through, we're still in there. Oh, well, we're still in Tasmania's best kept secret. We're not calling it that. It actually says it on the sign. Tomahawk. Tomahawk. We just pulled into the Tomahawk Caravan Park and had a chat with, I'm guessing it's the manager or the owner or yeah, someone who came out to see what on earth this monstrosity was doing in his driveway. And he said that this really is one of Tasmania's best 
kept secrets, yeah. I guess, and that most people don't spend enough time here. Like us, sadly, we're just driving through. But he said there's diving, there's a beautiful seven kilometer beach walk. Um, what else did he say? There was fishing. Yeah. So there's actually lots to do in Tomahawk. So if you get a spare few days, come up here and spend a bit of time here. We've decided we'd like to show you a little bit of Tomahawk, so we're gonna send the drone up. <laughs> Check out the size of these. Oh, well don't when you're standing up here, you get a bit of vertigo. They are huge. Oh, can you hear it? I don't think you can hear it. No. Can you hear them? No, I don't think you'll hear them. Alright guys, this is where we've turned up. Kettle Point Campground. So I think we're going to come right up, up to the Village Green Camping Area we hear that's got the most room up that way. So, let's go check it out. This is up at Cape Portland. Rad spot. Here at Pedal Point, found another sign, tells us a little bit about the place. It says if you look out to the water off the coast, you may see nesting shorebirds or even humpback whales and sperm whales. But if you look down, you might see some um, spectacular annually flowering miniature plants. So I don't know when they're supposed to flower. So maybe we'll find some. It says here that Petal Point contains rich cultural resources used by Tasmanian Aborigines for education and cultural traditions, such as weaving and necklace creation. And this necklace here looks insane. If I could find some of those shells, I would be very happy. Looks like he's found the site that he likes to look at. We're going to go explore the wind farms and the information centre. Yeah, Cape Portland and all that sort of area. So, and then Little Muscle Row. Yeah, we've got a bit to explore. Step it out, come on, yeah. Why? Forty-one. Forty-one. Forty-one meters. Forty-one Chris steps. Chris steps, yeah. I've got no idea if it's meters or not, but hey. Oh, that's concrete. Look at the size of it. Look at this. What's it made out of? I don't know. We should probably go to the information centre. Oh, yeah, we go to the information centre, it'll tell us yeah, everything. The visitor centre. The visitor centre. Alright, here we are. Tebrakana Visitor Centre. What is it? I'm assuming it's Tebrakana because it's an Aboriginal name. Oh. So we're going to go and learn about the Aboriginal history of this area because apparently it's quite interesting. Oh, I thought it's got to do with the wind farms. Yeah, but no, this is where they used to be 10,000 years ago. and oh, right. I don't know, I've only read a little bit about it, so let's go in and find let's out go. some more. He was the revered clan leader, formidable warrior and powerful spirit man who belonged to the Tebrakana country. Right. <laughs> Sound like I know what I'm talking about, don't I? Let's go. Very Chris, Aussie destinations unknown, then I'm going to say find us on YouTube. <laughs> Smiley face. 
Okay, so this is quite interesting here. It says there's archaeological evidence along the Jordan River that demonstrates that the Aborigines have lived in Chawana for at least 42,000 years. Um, it says as the last ice age ended, massive ice sheets and glaciers melted, causing sea levels to rise around the globe. Obviously, the formation of the Bass Strait um, has cut this part of Australia off from the rest of Australia. And it says here that the guys remained isolated from the rest of humanity for the ensuing 10,000 years. So that's a long time to be isolated. Um, this is a promise that was made by George Augustus Robinson to Manalagena. I think he was the dude that had the plaque out the front. It says here, I was commissioned by the governor to inform them if the natives would desist from their wanted outrages upon the whites, they would be allowed to remain in their respective districts and would have flour, tea and sugar, clothes and see, I guess that's, I don't know what that is, given to them, that a good white man would dwell with them who would take care of them and would not allow any bad white man to shoot them. And he would go about with them in the bush like myself and they then could hunt. He, Manalagena, was much delighted. So this is from the Friendly Mission. Um, 1966, so I guess that's a bit of a write-up about the history of this area. So another mm. little... Here we are, right there. That gives a perspective of where we are right now. Are you going to read like all that? No, I'm definitely not going to read all that. That's enough information for me to read. Come and read it for yourself. But there is heaps of info right here on the history of the area and there's also information I think that you found on the wind farm somewhere wasn't yeah, it? Yeah it's back through that way but it starts yeah, over here. Okay so we'll come down here and have a look. Oh here we go. Really look. Past Technical specifications of the wind farm look. I just want to know how, how wrong the blade is. Wow. So what do we got here? What are all the bits? Oil cooler, water cooler for generator, high voltage transformer, ultrasonic wind sensors is number four up there. Up the top there. Um, VMP top controller with converter is up here. There's a service crane, OptiSpeed generator, composite disc coupling, your gears. Where are my gears? <laughs> <laughs> um, gearbox up here. Mechanical disc brake, machine foundation, blade bearing, blade hub, blade pitch cylinder and the hub controller. You really sound like you know what you're talking about, honey. Totally know. Well, here we go, and here's a chart for the power curve and the wind speed. Mm, makes no sense. Okay, so kilowatts. So I'm guessing the faster it spins, the more output there is. Well, yeah, it taps out at 15. And it also doesn't So 15 miles per second, huh? Mm, this is Generates 3,000 kilowatts. Mm, I got no idea what that means. Google. Let's have a look through here then. <gasps> He's got that necklace, <gasps> those little shells. Oh, it's so pretty. Boring. Let's go. Oh, there's the shells that I found. Apparently, those shells you can find here. So I think we should go hunting. The shells, toilets if you need them. Okay. So, oh, here we go. Muscle Row Wind Farm Concept to Reality. January 2002, wind monitoring tower erected at Cape Portland. So the average wind at the wind farm site is 9.1 metres per second. Okay. And approximately, th or 33 kilometres an hour. Turbine, here we go, turbines start to turn at around 4, here we go, 12 kilometres per hour, a light breeze on the boat. Right, so 4 miles per second is 12 kilometres an hour. Yes. Turbine blades better and stop turning at around 90 kilometres per hour, which are storm conditions of around 50 knots. So if it gets too windy, they stop turning. Yeah. It's a bit of a protection thing, I think. So the best of V90 wind turbine generators used are class one, designed to withstand wind, wind gusts of more than 250 kilometres per hour. Which is just every day around here. That's what we got the other night in the caravan. Um, road construction began in 2009. The wind farm is spread over the 5,500 hectare property of Cape Portland. 70 kilometres of tracks have been upgraded. Um, 64 kilometres of underground cable connect the turbines to the control building, which 64 kilometres. I showed you before. Yeah, that's a lot of cabling. Wow. Um, here we go. 2011 major contract signed. The signing of contracts for the supply of the turbines. Danish company Vestas was the supply company. And Tasmanian company Hazel Brothers was the major civil contractor. More than 200 people worked directly on the project during dis uh, destruction. Wow. Construction. Here we go. Look at this. There you go. The first turbine foundation. Look how big the foundation is compared to this person. That's insane. The total volume of concrete in each foundation is around 510 cubic 
meters or 80 truckloads. In the foundations of it, wow. And there are 67 tonnes of reinforcing steel in each <laughs> foundation, plus nine tonnes in anchor bolts. The total weight of each foundation is over 1,250 tonnes. Each foundation is around 2.67 metres deep at the centre and 1.2 metres deep at the edge and around 19 metres in diameter and covered with a shallow layer of rock. That's insane. The school education program begins in 2012. Also in 2012, transport of the... Oh! Yeah, look at the size of that. That's insane. And we, think we got it hard. We actually saw some of those driving along the road, not in Tassie, but somewhere yeah, else. Somewhere, yeah. Queensland, they were driving them around. It's crazy to have that drive past you. So each of the 56 turbines was transported in pieces from Launceston to Bell Bay. Um, tower sections manufactured in Launceston by Haywards. Right. Um, other bits and pieces manufactured in China and Europe brought to Tassie by boat. Um, here we go, 2012, signing ceremony of the wind farm transaction. Can you read those top lines? Yes, September 2012, the Shenua Group and Hydro Tasmania signed the agreement of Muscle Row wind farm equity transaction in Beijing, China. You cheer. And, and here it says, here it says the Shenua Group holds a 75% share of the Muscle Row project. Of course they do. So anyway, of course they do. Let's move on along. <laughs> transmission lines stringing underway 2012. The 110 kilovolt transmission line from the wind farm to a substation near the town of Derby is approximately 48 kilometres long and has 156 transmission line poles, 28 metres high, 20 tonnes each. Uh, February 2013, the first turbines fully erected. And April 2013, commissioning underway 56 turbines generating capacity of each turbine, three megawatts, tower height, 80 meters. Here we go, blades, 44 meters long. What did I say? 41, you stepped out 41. It's Damn. A little bit short there, buddy. Slackened off, got to get some more height. <laughs> um, so they're 44 meters long and seven tons each. Seven ton each. Yeah, made, made in China. China. And Italy. Control Sorry, I'm being a little bit. Shh. May 2013, community open day. So Hydro Tasmania put on a high priority, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, that's the history of the wind farm. Did you stand up next to that thing? Pardon? Come and stand next to it and <laughs> seriously have a look at the size of this thing. <laughs> okay. The sound of this is incredible. Standing inside that information centre, you can sort of feel the building just moving, isn't it? Like yeah. a whoosh. I think whoosh. it doesn't really matter what we say or how we try and explain it to you. You're not going to understand until you're actually standing underneath it. Like, it, it's... <laughs> what? Let's get a bit closer uh... to it. Come on. It's incredible. Incredible. I'd love to go up in it. Okay. Whoa. I think... Yeah, take the camera and just like tip it backwards. Like that way? Yeah, just tip it. Keep tipping. Look at the size of it. Yeah, just leave it there. That's kind of what we're seeing. Wow! Ah! <laughs> Can you see it? Can you see it Can now? Can you see us and can you see it? And the blades up there. <laughs> see. Well, you can see it! <laughs> oh. Go. Um, no. Another nice beach around the corner here. Beautiful, isn't it? Nah. 
I had no idea how Oh yeah, to look at, there. but it's really cold right now. It was one of the prettiest beaches or little coves. Pretty freaking uh, cold. <laughs> that's what it was. Pretty cold and pretty windy, but it was oh, pretty. <laughs> that was brutally windy. <laughs> That's what you get for being close to a wind farm, I guess, in the northern eastern tip of Tasmania. She's gonna be cold. <laughs> Our buddy pals have shown up and brought with them firewood. <laughs> oh, you're doing a great job there. Yeah, very natural. <laughs> very natural. <laughs> Party gear on, hoodie, trackies, and pink uggies. So this is what these campers do that we meet up with. <laughs> they sit up, stand on the bonnet and dance. It's just modest. Can you show us how you do it? <laughs> Look at that bonnet. It's fine, it's very durable. <laughs> it's very durable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my turn! My turn! If you get on that bonnet, woman, <laughs> you couldn't even get up on there if you tried. <laughs> you reckon I should get up there? I don't reckon you should. Babe, get off it! <laughs> you get on there, I'll kill you. <laughs> I just can't because then I'll get my shin and that Don't say you can't. I mean, I can. It's had to marry more morning. Heave it! It's like the old loosen the lid thing, though. No. Someone's loosened it. That was all me. Oh. It's, really yeah. <laughs> it's got a massive knot through it. Come on, honey. Come on, honey. I'll go the same way, but I don't think it's gonna. It's just gonna. Oh. <laughs> this is how I play golf, too. <laughs> Can you play golf? Yep, I dig holes in the ground. <laughs> Decided to go for a little bit of a sunset stroll. Is really it's not grass. like it's like seagrass. I've had to say. It's almost yeah. It looks kind of like seaweed. What is it? It's got flowers. Oh yeah, it's got red over there. Beautiful red. The water's warm. You reckon? Yeah, it looks actually warm. Okay, strip off and jump in. <laughs> Straight in. Straight in. Some of the jewelry that we saw in the visitor information center was made out of shells and I think I've just found a whole heap of them. 8.42 p.m. Seems like the perfect time. Yeah, and then I'll wipe it around. Whoa, jeepers! Is too much? <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Fine. Look! So how many times have you used a camp oven before? They call me Mr. Camp Oven, honey. Okay, how many times? Mr. Camp Oven. <laughs> oh, did this, did this one look brand new? Yeah, it's a brand new one because I wore the other one out. <laughs> uh huh. Have you know anything going? How's it looking over there? It's looking alright. <laughs> it didn't stay to, to spur vigorously, did it? <laughs> so. so so you're getting the coals and someone's adding a little bit more flour to the bit too much water dough that we've got going on. So I put coal here. Yeah, yeah. You reckon we just sit it on that? No! Yeah. Oh, I no. should no. probably take too close to the fire. And and Oh, you're warming it up, okay. Preheating. Yeah, with a fan forced. 
got Baker Pat here, who's assisting with Le Chev's cooking tonight. Hey, 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 hey. We're out of Le Chev tonight. This is all Pat. <laughs> Oh, oh, Pat. This is Troopy Pat. Troopy Pat. And his lovely assistant. Oh, look. Got the Crazy Kirsty. Crazy Kirsty. <laughs> and now we've found the salt that was supposed to go in before. Rock salt. Okay, we got it. Is that a pinch? Is that salt? salt? Not pepper. No, it's, no, it's salt. Oh, it's not. It's look, it's pepper. like rock salt. Got oh. <laughs> it. <laughs> into like bits, like bread bits, and then put butter and yeah, that's what I reckon we do. Yep. So we've been outvoted. There's no trivet, there's no foil, <laughs> there's no baking paper. It's going straight in the camp of it. <laughs> so how do you think this is going to turn out? Failure. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh my goodness. Just stick it in there, Pat. <laughs> it is self raising, isn't it? No. Yeah. Oh, I don't know actually. It is, babe. Did we get self raising? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything could happen here. Hang on, were you actually a baker? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I actually am. All right. What? She's going on. Also I thought you were a builder. I am. He's also a baker. He's a builder that bakes the smoker. Qualified baker. Oh my goodness. Okay, Man so of many talents. Yeah, well, yeah, I keep that out there a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, now I think the, this might just work. The top. There's right. hope for us yet. Right, I'll go. Now. Look at that. Yep, wow. and that'll do all right. Oh. Yep. Pretty good, you reckon? Yeah, I reckon that's alright. Yeah. Just leave it. How long did it say to leave? 40 minutes. Yeah. Definitely gonna burn on the bottom. But it doesn't matter. We just, we you just eat off the top, don't yeah, you? you just leave, it, leave the burnt stuff oh, down there. Not, it's just damper on a fire. <laughs> a bit of butter. But we've got amazing coals for it. How long has it been in, do you know? I've actually got no idea. There's 20 minutes. Two beers, there's, there's 20 minutes to go. That's like three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see. Oh. It's probably a good thing that we check now. Pat, what do you reckon? Patty, I reckon it's done, mate. Yeah. I reckon we pull it out. I reckon it's rad. Okay. It was technically supposed to cook for another, apart, and if it's not quite another yeah, 17. I think because you made it flat, it might have cooked quicker. Oh, see that? Oh, yeah, that's no. alright. That's alright, that's fine. That's alright. Break it up. Oh, I smell it. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not from there. The vamp is the burnt bit's up, probably man. all over the bottom. Oh. He's going oh, to it make it yeah, even better. Ah. Just get is it amazing? Uh. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, you cake this on, it's soft. Oh, is it? Yeah. Get, get that in there. Look. <laughs> Look at that butter. You ready? All right, let's do it. Here, use this butter, dude. It's actually really nice. Look at that. Boys having a chat around the campfire with their coffees in the morning. Look at the wind farm in the distance. It's kind of perfect. was extremely tricky. The top one. Up. Throw it. Oop. Do I have dirt on my bum? Chris and I have a slightly different riding style. So you've seen mine, and I'm about to show you his. Crazy. Oh, just go. 